happy from what we saw on Tuesday. Von Miller had a great practice getting after the quarterback. I know it was a third and long day, but how have you seen him progress over the last week? Von's a pro. Von's a pro. He goes about his business um, in the manner of exactly what he is. He's a veteran. He's had a lot of success in this league. And the thing I'll say about Vaughn and, and all these players in the league that are to the stature of a Vaughn Miller when you talk about his past accolades and those type of things, they're there in the position they're at because of that extreme competitiveness and conscientiousness. And he knows what he wants it to look like. Um, he wants to help this team win a Super Bowl uh, more than anything. And that's clear from discussions and the way he goes about his business. And, you know, it's a day-by-day -day process, as I say all the time. We just got to continue to stack days and get ourselves ready um, for when the time comes that we're actually going to keep a record. How concerning is the, uh, the safety situation now if you got two guys week to week? Uh, this is the NFL. This is the NFL, and next man up. That's what it is. I'll, you know, I learned a long time ago, and specifically here in Buffalo, we th when I was coaching the safety, things like this happened all the time. You guys not, might not remember, but guys would be in, guys would be out. It's what it is. Next guy in. That's why we get paid to have the guys. It's a lot easier to coach guys that are veterans and have kind of established themselves and have a lot of reps. And, and Sean said it before that like we're going to take great pride in really weighing ourselves as coaches on the development of the guys with less repetitions or the, the opportunity for a backup to come in and play when things like this happens and play at a high level. And that's, that's what our jobs are as coaches. So no panic, no nothing, next guy up, and we'll move forward. Whoever's available on, uh, on the days we practice, we won't flinch. Is that, is that why what you just said, you get a guy like Kareem, a guy like Terrell, you know they've been in the league a little bit, they can adapt to different environments. Like, is that why you bring those guys in this time of year? Yeah, I mean, Brandon, Brandon's looking just to fill our roster in the right way, you know, and I'll be honest with you, Kareem specifically is a guy that I've admired from afar all the years of me in the secondary and the way he plays the game and the way he goes about his business and, you know, those type of things. So that's kind of a side note on you know my view of Kareem but in the end Brandon's going to make the decisions that are best for us and we're going to support him and uh really happy those guys are here and we get an opportunity to work with them Bobby, when you have two safeties come in after camp starts like Kareem where do you start with teaching them defense? kindergarten <laughs> I mean that that's what it is just the nuances like a guy like Kareem and even Terrell Terrell's been in the uh league a while and shoot I remember doing him when he came out of Utah uh, and identified him as a smart player. You know, a lot of guys that come out of Utah, I'll say it, Morgan Scally does a great job. Those guys are pretty schooled up when it comes to football. And, you know, you start, you kind of find, you start at the base level and just see how quickly they pick that up. And it's just a feel, it's like a teacher, right? You get a feel for your classroom and, oh, we can move on. These, the, the, you know, the pupils are really understanding what we're talking about. And there's a lot of check for understanding um, as far as our teaching goes. Um, that's part of the process, and that's part of what Sean believes in. It's not just teaching, but we got to check for the understanding first before we can move on. What can Smoot do for you guys on the defensive line? I think the biggest thing, and I'll never put an expectation on a player of what to expect on tape and all that. I have an idea, but I'm not going to do that. Um, but a veteran presence um, who's a smart football player who's seen a lot of football guy that plays the game the right way, has a, plays like he has a chip on his shoulder, and he probably does have a chip on his shoulder. Matter of fact, I know he does. Um, and, you know, the expectation is that he brings that. Um, not that he gets this many sacks or this many tackles, this many TFLs, this many quarterback hits, but that he comes every day in a consistent manner in the way that, you know, we'd like him to show up to work. Back at safety, when you're in a situation like this, can you just kind of tell us a little bit about how Cam Lewis kind of fits in and can play multiple versatile roles, especially when you, you need bodies at camp? And yeah, yeah, and Cam Cam provides that value. Shoot, I don't even know. I told you guys I'm terrible at years. How many years has Cam been here? Six, I think. Six. So he's played a lot of different positions. He came in starting out as a, I believe, as a corner this six years ago, a corner and a nickel. And now he's kind of transitioned. You guys see the way Cam plays the game. Um, I don't care what he's built like. You know, the guy plays the game the right way. He's a smart player. He's very intentional. 
about his practices and the way he comes out here every day and camps turned into a true pro and bring some value in a lot of different ways, not just necessarily nickel and safety and corner and all kinds of different things he can do, but he does bring value to us in the way that um, he's a nice puzzle piece. Um, Devon Solomon, what, what's been your impression of the way he approaches the game? He seems pretty mature for a rookie. Yeah, and I'm, I think you know how I'm going to answer this. I've answered the rookie question. I mean, rookie's a rookie. That doesn't mean they're doing well. That doesn't mean they're doing bad. There's still an adjustment to the way the NFL game works and the way we go about it and those type of things. But up till now, Javon's doing a nice job. Uh, there's a lot of room for growth. Um, but Javon's a good football player. I mean, he's a good football player. He's, he's He's a very good student, you know, not only with the coaches, but he uses his vets and is constantly picking their brain. And that's that's an impressive thing. But, you know, like every rookie, like every rookie you guys have asked about, and he's he's got a long way to go. And I'm excited to see his growth with the amount of work he puts in. Dorian Williams is a pretty, pretty good size for a linebacker these days. Yep. Uh, just how do you feel about his versatility to play strong side in a 4-3? front with when required. What strong side? Well, uh, be on the tight end side of a face, four down, three linebacker. Um, our linebackers, the best way I can answer this is our linebackers are all versatile. We're not... I think, you know, and I've talked about this in past years, but look, the NFL is going in a different manner. We've got to be good enough to stop the downhill run, and we've got to be good enough to play in space. So we are, you know, I think you've seen over the last couple of years the way we've gone about it. And we need space players that can play physical, and that's a unique skill set, and we try to identify it, and Brandon has done a good job. So all our guys have to be able to do those things. Again, this is this should be a plug-and-play defense. A little bit that's on us as coaches to make sure these guys are ready to go, and a little bit's on the players. The more you can do, the more opportunity you're going to have to play. And then a part of that is, like, I don't know the numbers. I'd have to look it up. But there maybe there's a little uptick in 13 personnel by offenses. I mean, yeah. Kansas City. Yeah. But, uh, you know, is a challenge to practice uh, base three linebacker sets in the NFL these days to get enough reps. Yeah, I mean, I think anytime you're in a unique package, and I'll frame it a different way, right? Goal line. Goal line is going by the wayside. Teams are more spread out. You're getting more 11 personnel, maybe 12 personnel down there tighter in the red zone, even on the one or two yard line. So, like, we're going to do our best to get enough reps at whatever package we are in uh, to where we can master that to the best of our ability. And that's our job as coaches to identify that. And our staff does a great job of that, of, of, they're constantly throwing things at me in a great way of, hey, we need to make sure we're getting enough of this, we're getting enough of this. You know, this is my first time at doing it. We got guys that have coordinated, guys that have coached at a high level, um, been in the league a long time. Um, you know, your uh, Al's and your Joe Dana's and, um, you know, so those guys have been around it a lot. So they're great sounding boards and, and uh, really good coaches. Um, and I'm just lucky to have those guys to help me with those type of things. Cole's going to miss some important reps, in particular for a rookie. What's the challenge of keeping him up to speed with him not being on the field? Yeah, being creative in the ways we can keep his mental on point and, you know, finding different ways to, to make sure, although he's missing potentially some time here, is, you know, just making sure mentally he's staying in it. Um, he's got the right makeup. We identify those guys, and, you know, he'll – he will, knowing Cole, he'll do everything that he needs to do to make sure he's still in it mentally, and I know Joe will keep him along those lines too. How has Matt progressed even since the last time that we talked to you? And yeah, you said a better he's experience. doing a good job. Yeah. He's doing a good job. He's doing a good job day by day. He's doing a good job. Just keep stacking days, get a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better, and he'll be just fine. Bobby, if you can go back to what you said about, you know, um, you know there's, it's almost like positionless defense. We've kind of done this for years. You go back to when you started almost 20 years ago coaching, right. right, in college. Right. What, when did the transition happen? And back then, did you see this guy, was it like that or was it, no, that guy's a strong side, that guy's a weak side, that guy's a nickel, that guy's a safety. I mean, I'll be, uh, yeah, that's a good question, Sal. So really the first time it uh, happened was, I think Sean Payton is really good. And if you remember back when he's with the Saints, I was at Carolina in 11 and 12, 
really the way he does things is is in a really really smart way and like it's different personnels but people are in different spots but it's really the same formation you, you follow me so he could figure out if you were in base what i'm going to do he would be listening they're going base they're going nickel and to the point um guy we had here who was a really good nickel in the league cap munnerlin we felt like he was tough enough and and for me specifically that's when i first started to realize like oh okay and you know sean teaching me those type of things and like look he's just doing the same stuff out of different personnel groupings you know so and he's looking for matchups so um you know that was the first time for me specifically when you're like okay and it was really the nickel position I had to play like a linebacker out of AJ and Vanessa so far this training camp and what are you still looking for? AJ's AJ's uh doing a real nice job. He he's he's focused um and is showing that he wants to have a great year and help us win a Super Bowl. I mean the thing with all these guys and I'm gonna keep saying I'm gonna bore you guys to death, but is literally being able to stack days, right? We look at it as two ways. I tell the guys you're either growing or you're dying a little bit every day. You're never staying the same. So the two sides of that is this. If you grew a little bit that day and you felt like, you know, you had a pretty good day, can you stack back-to-back days? And if you died a little bit in your game, well, that provides another opportunity for growth. So um, he's doing a good job of, of using that in a way that if he didn't have a great day, he's growing the next day. And he's really conscientious of, his, of the um, – things that he needs to improve on, things we identified in the spring. And and really, the thing about AJ right now, he's playing so selfless, you know, and that's, it's really cool to see. Now, two days of pads in, Gable's first time wearing pads. What have you kind of seen from him and maybe his progression? Yeah, Gable's, Gable's doing a nice job. I mean, you think about it, he's never put shoulder pads on before. We had a couple guys on the team, someone was, one of the coaches was joking around that we've, I think we have two guys that have never worn shoulder pads. You know, so he's done a nice job. He's got to continue to grow. He's extremely powerful, as we could all imagine, um, in a compact, more of a compact uh, body. But he, he's very strong. He's very strong. He understands the leverage, obviously. We know that. He won a gold medal for leverage, um, but uh, or two. But, um, uh, no, he's doing a nice job, and it'll be I'm, – I'm excited to see him in game action. Anything else? Let me just say this. She's embarrassed, but Kaylee Woodward, she does a great job. She's in charge of me, and that's not an easy job. So she's great. She's great. Thank you, guys.